So here's the, the railroad where the train is going to stop really right away is up here. And then over here, you've got the town graveyard here in Salem, Illinois. So what I'd like to point out is this is a very convenient spot to get run over because it's a very short uh, distance to just to carry you off the train and into the grave. Probably one of the bigger businesses in town here is uh, funeral homes. Being that most of the population is pretty elderly. I mean, looking at this here, and this here, there's definitely nobody moving here. And I think a lot of the people leaving, in addition to anybody over the age of 18, who's able to, is also a lot of people leaving uh, horizontally. You can't really tell by looking at it, but this pizza is seriously about the top quality pizza you can get for two bucks a slice right here at Casey's General Store which I would say is probably numero uno uh, in the Midwest General Store gas station kind of place for food gotta stop northbound right there there's the train Stoby Jim Kenobi immersed in sweat trying to get the hell out of this place Salem Illinois I think I'm gonna nap this car here. Are we going? It's barely moving. Man, look at this thick, incredible jungle of this place. It's really getting old. Kind of fairly out of sight car, but I'm not gonna feel content until you're speeding up and out of this place. Additionally, there's a junction ahead where the train is either gonna go to Indianapolis or to Chicago. I'm kinda just thinking it is gonna go to Indy, but I'm not positive. It's a nice pond right there. Not much going on here besides agriculture pretty much over the entire state. I'd like to take the time to kind of showcase uh, one of the more pleasant rail cars that exists out there for traveling on. It's a basic variant of the covered hopper here and instead of you know just like a porch I mean look at this this is totally enclosed uh, basically making it very easy to stay totally out of sight down in this little section here behind the lip. I don't see how anybody could see you. Uh, you know, you might be concerned that there's some kind of hazmat being carried on this, but I don't see a hazmat placard. It'd be pretty tough for a cop to know if anybody's in here or not. See, so you got tons of room. I mean, that's enough room for eight people if you really wanted, but I'd say four or definitely two very comfortably and you got these little windows here that's very nice so you can just stand up and peek out uh, look at the scenery I mean this is this is big enough to stand up a very tall guy and you got all this room here very nice if you're traveling in a storm this is the front of the car it's gonna be a little difficult stay dry still you might get some water splashing down out of here but Right back here, and it, it happens that the rear side has got the brake end on it, all the brakes and gear and stuff. But that's not always the case. This could be just as easily the front end. You know, so if you're in a storm, this is going to be pretty much totally dry. Well, you might get some drippage down off of this 
overhead here. You have here is a more common covered hopper. This is basically on any general manifest freight train these days. It's the East centerfold. And it's pretty, you know, you got a porch here, you got a little flange to get behind. I mean, the difference in luxury is pretty clear. This is fine, you know, you can lie down here. You're not going to get spotted, most likely. I've never been spotted on one of these rail cars. But this, I mean, this is just so much better. So it's very fortunate that these guys, there's been a lot of these guys out here on the uh, the Midwest. These are very rare out West. And what you notice is um, these don't carry, these exclusively carry like chemicals and powder. The bottom here, this little outflow valve, that's not for grain, that's for, and the whole chute, this car has probably never carried grain. These, uh, it's a different story, these are more versatile. How this thing handles in a storm may be tested out because we've got major looking clouds around here off to the west. And it's kind of that real calm before a possible massive storm feeling out here on this siding in Illinois. So a key element of uh, you know being out here is these corn corn fields and corn stalks that you're seeing. And this is definitely a a way to survive if you run out of food. However, what I'd like to point out is that this variant here, this is not your sweet corn. No, this is for feeding your cows and uh, whatever, sheep and chickens in the feedlot. As you can see, you're not gonna really, you're really not gonna enjoy eating this stuff. But it is out here, uh, you know. Ah, I got one kernel there. Perfectly tasty. Not going to hurt you, but it's really not very delicious. This is a major looking storm starting to come in here. Uh, not going to run out of food. There's all this corn. Water, well, there's going to be rain, but I'm not really excited about this. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm a little concerned. It's getting dark. Uh, this car can provide some shelter from the rain. And this is, <coughs> we're talking a major storm moving in here. This is not a joke. I can't tell what's going on down here. I can't tell if there's another train coming or what the hell. The weather changes faster up here. This storm, it isn't raining yet, but if it does, I can tell it's going to be crazy. Now here comes the rain. Dark. Lightning flashes, thunder, crashing. And I'm so far dry here in the rail car, but if it comes down, it's gonna be it could be a problem. I don't see that these cars like totally waterproof. If we're not moving. Whoa, oh, there we go. Look at this box car here. I mean, if we're going fast, the boxcar is going to block all the rain. But not moving at all. The rain could drip right down in here. As you can see, this is starting to get tight with plants. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, in this day and age, like boxcars like this, this one's pretty empty seeming. They, they always shut the darn door on it. So. I mean, if that thing was open, I could easily be out of sight and out of the weather and dry. But I don't think it's going to happen here. This is... I'm feeling rain starting to come in here. Unfortunately, I don't even have a camera that's waterproof. So what we got going on here is we got a yard office here. And then we got a lot of houses here that could easily spot me trying to get off. I think this is Peru. Indiana, I saw a sign coming in and basically debated getting off here, hitchhiking to South Bend, or at least taking a break from this train. And the problem you can see is that, I mean, that's a yard office right there. They're going to see me get off, so I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. 
It's about nine in the morning. All right, we got a train pulling in on this side, blocking the yard office. Time to make a break, get the hell off of this thing. Well, couldn't be asking for more attention in this tiny ass town with this pack. But I am off the train and I guess I'm gonna stash this stuff and go look around. I was considering hitchhiking the South Bend. So, take this pack off and go ask around. And then take a break from the train. Pretty simple situation, further up the tracks at least, with no fence or nothing if I decided to keep doing the train here. What's going on? Uh, Stowed the hobo here in Peru, Indiana. It's just where the train went. This is one of those areas where you can't really tell where the trains are going. And you just end up stops pretty much. It could have just as easily been Indianapolis or Chicago. So this city, uh, among other things, is notable for Cole Porter, born here, and it's the circus capital of the world, I guess. This is a circus style uh, architecture going on. Additionally, it's also uh, Jim Stoby stopped here and left. So pretty much it's just like another of many, many Midwest towns that used to be cool and now is pretty much totally drying up. Uh, pretty much all the storefronts are like this going on. Um, a lot of overweight and obese people walking around as well. It's a fairly pleasant climate, but I'd say in general there's no reason to move here or come here at all, and I'm only here because the train came. It's clearly impossible train to ride right here. As you can see, it's just tractor trailers. One of the annoying things about this route. As far as me, got everything you need to go hang out by the tracks for a while. I'll try out all these 99 flavors. I got five bottles. Um, so that's, that's it for Peru. Been here about a couple hours. Probably be here a lot longer waiting for the stupid ass train to show up. But uh, regardless, it's an interesting little town for about two hours. And that's about it. So back to the train yard, start drinking, hopefully something will show us. A close look in these portals shows Ford vans heading east. What does that mean? I'm not totally sure. But that's initially to me not an indication that it's going to Detroit, but what do I know? So I decided to get on the stack, stack attack train. Uh, this is another case of not knowing where I'm going. Uh, what's the date here? It's September 6th. Yeah, I don't know where the train's going. It's going east. I'm trying to get to Detroit. It's so dumb, like, I'm realizing the total absurdity of this trip. Like, I'm trying to go, which is about a three hour drive from here. It's probably gonna take a couple days. It's really ridiculous. I think that train may have actually been a better choice, but who the hell knows, man? So, this will go at the worst to Columbus, or uh, maybe it'll go to Detroit. There's a junction up ahead in Fort Wayne. We'll see what happens. As uh, we were seeing in Illinois, you know, you got soybeans and corn, and that's what I think one of these is. Um, I don't know how much more I'm going to see. Obviously, it's getting dark. Uh, the next town to go through is Fort Wayne, which I may or may not get off on. Looks like we're going fast. You're darn right. This train is pouring through another dismal Indiana town. It's the only way you want to see these towns. Plays it right through. I don't know which one this was. Huntington, here we are. Every time you pass one of these three ways here, one of these three three-lighted signal masts, 
you're always wondering, that basically means you're at a junction. And it's too dark with this camera to see, but it means you may be going the wrong way. And you don't know that. It looks like we're just here to pass another train in the dark at Huntington, but the fact that there's three lights means that there's two ways this train might go, so I'm not sure what's going to happen up ahead. So, I think this is Fort Wayne. Uh, it's like a decent sized town. It's definitely a chance of getting off here. This train is really moving here. It's got to be going about 60 miles an hour. Again, I don't know which direction I'm going. There went off a whole bunch of tracks that way. Uh, so I, I don't know, maybe I'm going to Detroit. That'd be nice. So as far as what's going on here in Toledo, this downtown is just about totally deserted. Um, basically, I'm not sure exactly the reasons for all of it. Maybe just the slowdown of the rust belt and all that. But basically nothing going on. Uh, vacancies, very cheap apartment rentals available. And a lot of the old brick stuff is kind of just starting to fall into disrepair. There's a nice waterfront here if you got a boat or something. Boat around. Now pointing south with the Norfolk Southern. Railroad bridge right down there. That's about where you'll catch a westbound. So pretty, you know, it's a decent climate. There's a lot of cool architecture, but basically I think this place seems deserted to me. It's kind of depressing. You know, you got this high-end posh apartment building with complete almost vacancy according to the sign posted at the bottom. You got old factories like this all boarded up. Now, one of the few interesting things going on here is probably these docks where you got freighter ships, uh, Laker freighters that travel the Great Lakes. This Adam E. Cornelius routinely travels to Duluth to get iron ore and it might do grain too. That'd be a pretty interesting trip. Right now it's in dry dock. Alright, so it's the darkest hours of the night out here now, and it's kind of the time where you're trying to decide what to do next. The town has been pretty lackluster. There's basically nothing going on here. So uh, the next choice, I guess, would be to head down to the train yard and maybe head west again, kind of at the eastern limit of where I felt like going. So maybe back to Chicago. It's another one of those situations where don't know where the train's going. See, most of them go to Chicago, but there's always that chance of going back to Peru as well, which I'm really hoping doesn't happen. So these are the kind of uh, issues faced when riding through the Midwest. Toledo. Oh, it's the darkest hours of the night here in Toledo. The stack train just pulling in. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna stop. Pretty dark out here. Kind of in a spot. That's the yard office right there. I definitely wouldn't be hanging out here if it was light. Is he stopping? Not sure. I just boarded this westbound double stack in Toledo. And it stopped right here at the yard office, so hopefully it's just because it's passing eastbound. Here and completely sitting back when the ball shows up. The darkest hour is the night, September 8th, 2014. Oh. Well, everything's looking under control on the way out of Toledo so far. There was a guy shining a, a uh, spotlight in my direction, kind of, but speed looks good. 
should be out of here for good. Out. Oh, it's a nice sunrise here. Heading into out of Gary, Indiana, right into Chicago. Um, it's definitely going to be a need to get off this train before it pulls into whatever yard it's going to in Chicago. Ultra high security in that area. So I'm about to start packing up. As you can see, we got the lake. the train has, uh, I wouldn't say it's totally dead-ended, but it stopped out here, still in Indiana. You can actually uh, see a sign that says, Welcome to Indiana, uh, nearby I-90, I think it is. So I'm just going to get off here. And, you know, I could just discuss that I mean, one of the non-glorious things about uh, cargo trains is this is often required. I mean, this train eventually is going to make its way towards Chicago but I don't really want to just sit out in the open on that porch in the daytime here who knows when it's going to move so I'm going to walk and try to find a bus stop or a metro station which should be close I've got to say it's really useful having a smartphone you know to uh, find the nearest metro station which it turns out is two miles this way which will get the rest of the way into town. So that's the end of this train uh, from Toledo into Chicago. So one of the niceties here I found right next to that spot where I got off the train is Calumet Beach. Uh, this is like not even a mile walk from that spot. So it's after Labor Day and things have kind of shut down here. But water temperature is still pretty pleasant. Got the the heroes of the U.S. Coast Guard run this little base down at the beach. As you can see, this is a nice spot. Got the Lake Michigan, nice freighter ship out there. Who knows where he's going. And then you got Gary over here, which looks good from a distance. Probably the only way the place looks good. And then you got this interesting abandoned mill, steel mill I think it is. Getting, looks like it's getting demolished right now. Yeah, it might be hard to see because of like sun glare, but I think they're actually bulldozing this steel mill right here. It'd be kind of cool if they just use one big explosive, just blow the whole thing up, watch it collapse, but they're just using dozers. Mm -hmm. 